let me wear a prom dress and do drag queen makeup because it's like one of the few times a month that I'm going Hello, out. Hello loves. This video was inspired by Raw Beauty Christie and a video that she filmed a couple weeks ago, maybe. I can't remember exactly when it was. I'm just gonna be honest with you guys. I don't know how I'm gonna do this. Little man's been having a meltdown. He's been screaming. This is my third or fourth try on this video. I wouldn't be doing you guys any favors and I'd be doing myself a disservice if I didn't make this video before I move on and make any other videos on this channel. I was feeling like this for a long time. I didn't realize that I needed to address this until I saw Christy do it on her video. I'll post her video down below, but she's like millions of followers and who am I? She is a new mom. Her baby, I think, is a couple months older than my baby. So I feel like part of this identity crisis, she was calling it an existential crisis, which I'm telling you, as I was listening to this, I was like, yes, girl. Yes. I think maybe part of it is new mom life. Part of it is just life after slash during quarantine. Part of it might be the age, even though I think I'm a bit older than her. I don't know around how old she is. So I'm gonna address what I can. I do have two pages of notes, but I think I might just kind of go off the cuff and talk about it. A couple of days before I listened to this video, I had posted on my community tab here. That's how you feel about it. Oh my God, I smell so good. Side notes, I smell so good. I'm wearing my Juliana's perfume. Today's video is sponsored by Juliana's perfume. Look at this packaging, first of all. The black and the gold, it's so elegant to me. Even the font I'm in love with. Juliana's perfume is an affordable, designer inspired fragrance brand. Look at this beautiful packaging. This is the bottle. Is that not gorgeous? Sorry, somebody wants to be in the video or he's gonna cry. Underneath the bottle of perfume you get, there's a little sample right in here. I took mine out because I use it as a travel set. That's like a little hack. Before you open this bottle, you can test out the scent and see if you like it, see if it agrees with your body chemistry before you open this one. And then you can get a full return. You can get all of your money back. But this little, do you see that little tab on there? You can't take that off or they're not gonna take it back. Just make sure you test it first. And then if you do like it and you wanna keep it, what I did was I just threw that little tester in my bag and I spray it on myself like if I need a refresh, it's my travel scent. Also, every time you purchase a new scent for free, you're gonna get two samples of a different fragrance. It's stuff that I wouldn't have known to try, but Every single scent that they sent me, they sent me three different big bottles. With each of those came two scents to try. So I got six other scents and they are all incredible. In fact, I just sprayed one on myself before this video. And as I was making the video, I'm like, oh my God, I smell delicious. And I didn't know that I liked it at first because it was kind of strong. They go on a little bit strong. That's the thing with these scents. That's like any perfume. Just give it a minute. And then as it mixes in with your pheromones, your body chemistry, give it like five, 10 minutes, and then it's gonna smell amazing. Sometimes with designer inspired scents for much more affordable prices, you're gonna get a headache or it'll smell just like the scent, but a cheaper version. Like you could tell that it's cheaper materials that they're using, not with Juliana's perfume. Other brands of cheaper designer inspired fragrances will give me a headache. They'll trigger my asthma. I'll get the sniffles all night while I'm wearing them. Not with these. These smell luxurious. They last all day, all night. The scent that I requested was Delina. I heard about this perfume. It's like a cult favorite on TikTok and Instagram and all the influencers on YouTube swear by this scent. So I started doing research because it's over $300 for the original. And I don't think I'd ever purchase a perfume for that much, but especially as a new mom, don't have the luxury of spending $300 when I'm buying diapers <laughs> and formula and baby food, but I wanted to try it because everyone swore by it and I needed a new signature scent. For years, I wore Chanel Chance, which I love, but I just feel like it's dated on me now. I used to wear it all the time to visit, so it kind of has that connotation with it. Not that that's bad. Those are really, really good memories. I try to keep all that positive, but it's just time. So I've been testing them out. You guys know since like January, February, I've been testing all of these new perfumes. You want your man to think you smell good. So I'll go to Adam and I'll be like, what do you think about this one? And he's like, mm, and it's all right. Or like, oh, that one's way too sweet. Or he's like, do you like it? So I know he doesn't love it until I was like, all right, let me try this Delina that everybody swears about. There's two. There's Delina exclusive. Juliana scent is Inner Beauty. That's their Delina inspired fragrance. So it's Inner Beauty. There's also exclusive. Inner Beauty exclusive or Delina exclusive is the original. It's 50-50. Either people love the exclusive and they hate the original or opposite, they hate the original 
I just said that. They love the original and they hate the exclusive. Personally, you guys, they both, to me, smell identical. A lot of people say they smell completely different. I don't think so. I think they smell identical. It's just the exclusive is a lot more potent. So for me, I prefer Delina. I don't think you, you're you gonna really know which one works for you if you don't try both. Will I wear the exclusive? Absolutely. It still smells really good. The Delina though, I got stopped three times just walking from the parking lot to the restaurant by people telling me I smell delicious. What am I wearing? Every time I put it on, Adam's like, ooh, you smell really good. This is gonna be my new signature scent. I'm telling you, it's a cult favorite for a reason. And there are a lot of them, like the Rihanna one that everybody loves doesn't work on my body way too sweet for me. The inner beauty, you smell luxurious. You smell like a boss babe that has it together. I feel like when I wear this, or if I smelled somebody who smelled like me wearing this, I'm telling you, I would chase a woman down and I'd be like, I am so sorry, but you smell so good. What are you wearing? I've done it before, but I don't think I'll ever have to do it again because I'm that girl. Like you are that girl when you're wearing this. And I've been, as we're talking about in this video, struggling with some steam issues, figuring out where I belong in life right now as a new mom. I just don't get dressed anymore every day. I don't have to. I sit at home with the baby all day long, but that kind of wears on your self-esteem. So I've been just trying to wake up and put on a little bit of concealer and mascara, some cheeks and lips and spray some perfume on. Just sitting there knowing that I smell like a boss babe pulls you out of that depression. Run, do not walk and get yourself this perfume. The staying power is all day long. What am I forgetting? Oh, if you want to try it, which I think you need this, you guys. Like I don't say you need a lot of things, but I think you need this. You're you're getting a $300 scent for, I can't remember if it's $59 or $69, either way. You're also getting two other fragrances, but you can get a few of them because they're so affordable. There's also a Facebook group. I think this is so cool. There's a Facebook group where you can go on and you can be like, what scent do you like? Does this one work? I don't like this one. I love this one. I got inner beauty. I don't love it. No one's gonna ever say that, <laughs> that type of thing. But also you can vote on what designer inspired scent you want them to create next. And you can also help them name their fragrances, which is so cool. If you wanna give it a shot, which you should, I'm gonna put the link below. And then if you want 10% off, you can use my code 10 off and enjoy. Inner Beauty is hands down my favorite. Now they do sell out sometimes. If they do, they restock pretty quickly. Put your name on the waiting list and you'll get an email when it's back in stock. So like hurry up because your sisters on here are gonna go get this right away and you're gonna lose out on smelling good for a couple weeks. Run you guys, it's such high quality for such an affordable price. For this price in the department store, you're gonna get stuff that smells like it's $50. This is 50 or 60, whatever it is, dollars, and you smell like you're $300. You smell like you have made it, you have arrived, and people are gonna smell you've arrived, and they're gonna smell when you leave, and then they're gonna chase you down and ask you what you're wearing, I'm telling you. All right, back to the video. Mwah. A couple of days before Christy posted her video, I posted on my community tab because I was feeling the same way, and I was like, why are you guys here? What are you watching me for? Are you watching me for prison life stuff? Are you watching me for new mom stuff? Are you watching me for fitness stuff? Are you watching for all things Adam and Row? Are you like, forget all of that stuff? You guys are things of the past. We're watching just for baby CJ and his adorableness. Because honestly, I feel lost. I feel like I don't know where I belong in this YouTube channel, but I also think that that's kind of a metaphor for my life. I don't know if I said this already, because I'm telling you this is the fourth time I filmed this video. Christy and I had a baby around the same time. I know I said that part, but I don't know if I finished the thought. So is this just kind of like a milestone? We're both about a year, like a year and a few months after having babies. And like, you know how babies walk around 12 to 15 months? Is this something like mommies go through around the same time frame where we don't know who we are anymore? Because the first year of the baby's life, it's just like, baby, 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 I'm figuring this out. I got this. I'm gonna be a super mom. I'm gonna figure it all out. And now we're honestly tired. <laughs> And they're moving into toddler years and it's a totally different time frame for a whole entire year of your life. And at least my life, I'm still not sleeping at night. I have to deal with this in the middle of trying to work and take phone calls and do this. But they have to come first because you have to keep them alive, right? Your priorities are behind that. Maybe we're just tired. Maybe we don't know where we belong. And I think a lot of it is hormonal, but I think a lot of you guys, whether you're new moms, prison wives, or just like coming out of quarantine can relate. Who am I? What do I like? What do I wanna do? I am Christian's primary caretaker. 
I work from home. I was able to get a job where I can work from home and stay home with him, which I love. But at the same time, I don't get adult interaction every single day. Aside from Adam, of course, but like other adults. I was really upset and I was having this kind of like a meltdown with Adam the other day. We'd gone out to breakfast. We were volunteering with two nonprofits that morning and we had other people in the same industry in the area meet us there. And as everyone was talking and they were sharing what they did, interacting and exchanging numbers and information and websites and all of that amazing stuff. I used to do, that was me, right? I was in the mix of all that. I was the one that was connecting everybody and sharing who I was. And I felt like I was just the mom. I felt like I was just the extra. I felt like I was on the outside looking in and it's really hard to put to words how I felt, but I guess just saying like I was just the mom, it was so hard for me because I love being a mom. I love being CJ's mom. I love my life. I am so happy. But there's times where I'm like, why am I so depressed? Why am I struggling so much? I miss not only interacting with adults, because and again, this is all over the place, but I was trying to say this earlier, that I've been a mom for a year, but two years prior to that, we were locked down. So I haven't had adult interaction for over three years, really. So I just miss that. I, I miss using my brain. I miss being intellectual. I miss bouncing those ideas and exchanging numbers with people and communicating with people because I sing nursery rhymes all day, which is so part of my purpose and my passion. And this is all I ever wanted. But on the other hand, it's like this weird catch 22 because one side of me is so fulfilled doing this. And the other side of me is like, who am I and where do I belong? I'm so happy and I love this, but I also like, where do I fit in? And I don't want to just do this. I want to be an adult. I want to create and I want to, you know, I want to make money and I want to be an entrepreneur and run my nonprofit and all of that stuff. But I also, there's not enough hours in every single day and he needs me the most. And I was feeling so torn and depressed and I didn't know how to express this and I didn't know where to go with my YouTube channel and I didn't know what you guys wanted. Do I go back to prison life stuff? Because that's what a lot of people are here for. But that's also hey. not my life right now, right? But I but I still wanna help loved ones of the incarcerated and get unfair sentences, get eyeballs on them and help people coming out. And Adam ha and I have so many ideas that we talked about for so many years and visit and like they're all coming to life for him. And I feel like I'm just on the outside watching it. And I'm like, I was supposed to be involved in this. And from his perspective, he's like, you are doing so much. Like I wouldn't be able to be doing this if you weren't there with the baby and taking care of all of that. I see it differently, right? So I, I didn't understand how normal this these feelings are. Like I was like, what is wrong with me? Am I having a mental health crisis? Until I watched Christy's video. And then I talked to other new moms, like my sister, and she's going through the exact same thing. Thing. I have so many ideas that I want to do that I want to make videos about in all those different areas and Christy said this in her video like if you don't fit into one niche it's almost like the internet puts you into one niche like I am the prison wife I am the phoenix that rise out of, that rose out of the ashes that's what I talked about and that's how I motivated everybody and I kind of miss it sometimes but then I can't be the mommy and I can't be the girl that loves mom clothes and mom clothes. <laughs> the girl that's a new mom is exploring new mom fashion because I'm just the prison wife, but I want to do all those other areas. And it's, and she was kind of saying like, but it's my channel and I can. And I was looking back on my old videos in the middle of this whole crisis and I'm like, Oh my God, I was so confident and badass and I knew exactly what I was saying and I knew exactly what I needed to fight for and I loved doing it. I'm like, who is that? Like I didn't even recognize myself when I looked in the mirror. So I need to figure out how to get back there. Guys, I wrote a whole entire book on confidence and how to build confidence for women especially for women, I mean, men can use it too. And I was flipping through it the other day because I was just craving teaching a lesson out of there for my prison wives that are here. Any woman can use this book and build their confidence with the exercises that I put in there. It's what I did for 11 years of my life, all of the tools and exercises when I was just a prison wife with a lifer. And I was like developing all of these anxieties and social anxiety because I didn't understand how to explain to people, well, he's a lifer, but he didn't hurt anybody. He's a lifer, he didn't kill anybody. You guys know how it is. Until he got home and now that's different. Seriously, I have these ideas where I wanna take that into a women's prison and I wanna teach it. I wanna take it potentially into a men's prison and teach it with Adam. But I have to be able to get to the point where I can teach the lessons. Like you teach what you need to know. I need to go back and go through them. So I'm thinking, maybe 
maybe I'll teach some of them on here so I can just get re-familiarize myself with them, get back there. I have this really cool lesson that I teach a story about JLo that I think I'm gonna teach on a video for you guys just because I love it. It's one of my favorite lessons on building confidence. I need it. Let's do this. Let me know in the comments if you want me to teach that lesson and if you want me to teach more lessons out of that book. I'm in such a huge tangent. I'm gonna just, let me check my notes for a sec. I miss getting up and having a routine. I miss getting dressed every day. I know that's crazy, but I feel like I live in the same leggings and sports bras and tank tops all day long. So when I have an opportunity to get dressed up, either like the, I'll have an event and I'm just so spent from the day because he's a needy guy, barely lets me put him down. And I think that's every baby between, I think it's like what, nine and 15 months where they have the most separation anxiety for mom. So literally I can't put him down to go to the bathroom. He comes with me. I know it's crazy. I know that I'm gonna have haters talking about it. Like today I put him in his little walker. He fought me tooth and nail. He screamed, he strained his legs, kicked his feet. I had to fight him to get him in his little walker and I left him in there screaming. I was shocked the neighbors didn't call the police. I'm shocked I'm not deaf at this point. So I do let him cry, but also there's times where it wears on me. It's like if somebody was taking the tar pick and strumming down your spinal cord. That's how much the screams and like the top of the lung piercing, it's screeching is what it is. That's how much it wears on your nervous system. It's like psychological warfare. If you know, you know, that's all I'll say. Anyway, I just don't have a minute to myself. So sometimes I'm getting ready for an event that's dressy and I go looking like a hot mess express, throw myself together, I'll throw my hair in a bun like this or I'll let it be frizzy and awful. That or I'm like, oh, we need a new car. Okay, we're gonna go to the car dealership. Let me wear a prom dress and do drag queen makeup because it's like one of the few times a month that I'm out of the house. So it's one or the other, but I miss getting dressed. I miss wearing my clothes. So like even just today, I'm working on it. Even just today, like I'll put a picture here if you can't see my whole outfit. I just put on this little slip dress with a belt. I am comfortable as all get out. I have a little pair of shorts underneath it so I can still bend down and get the baby. I can sit and play on the floor with him and feel like I'm not, you know, I could be out in the stroll with him in the stroller. I'm not giving everybody a show. I miss that. I miss a routine. And as much as I hated it in the moment, I feel like a routine helps. So I've been trying to get myself dressed up wearing perfume. That's why it was incredible that Juliana wanted to work with me. A little perfume and mascara and concealer, some cream blush and a little bit on my lips. It took me maybe a minute or two to throw myself together and I just feel better. I feel like I'm pulling myself out of my rut. Also, forgot this part, Adam and I traded in both of our cars and we're sharing a car at the moment because it's just the way life has to be right now. He has the car most of the time because he has meetings out of the house. He has to go to the office, he has to go to job sites, he has to meet investors and contractors. And so I'm stuck in the house most of the day. He even just going to the store to communicate with people will help, but I don't have the option. There are a couple of stores that I could walk to. I do frequently, just grocery stores, but just going there, just going there and interacting with adults helps tremendously going outside in the sun, getting some fresh air for me and him. It's usually a time where he'll take a nap, which is a catch 22. It's great because he'll sleep. But on the other hand, then he doesn't sleep in the house when I can get stuff done. It's just, it's life right now. Where are we going with this? 20 minutes. I, maybe you can relate. And that's what I'm hoping. That's why this video is coming out. Because number one, I want you to understand where I am. Hopefully how we're going to move forward with the channel. You can give me your opinions in the comments below. I don't even know if I want to say this but I'm going to because I'm all about honest transparency I do because we're family and you need to know this he's trying to fall asleep you need to know this because it's probably what you're gonna go through too okay I feel like sometimes I miss my old life my life today is so different than it was two and a half years ago but in a weird way and I've spoken to other people whose husbands have gotten out of prison and they say the same thing. Sometimes I miss that. I would never take it back for the whole entire world. I wouldn't have my little man. I wouldn't have Adam here. I love my life. I am so happy with my life right now. So I'll miss it and I'll be like, what the hell, what, what are you thinking? But I think more than missing, like obviously you don't miss the depression of being in prison life. Obviously you don't miss sleeping alone at night, right? Or just your life being a pipe dream, your future being a pipe dream and all of your dreams and aspirations are maybes. Obviously I don't miss that. But what I do miss is my independence and my routine. And I'm, I literally did more in a day than most people do in a year. And I don't wanna say a year. <laughs> 
a little bit vain, sweetheart, but than most people do in a week. And Adam used to tell me all the time, I don't understand how you get all of that done. But I could, I would go to work, I would go directly to the gym, I'd go to the grocery store, I would take care of my sick and dying mother, I was hanging with my nieces and my nephews all the time, I would fit in visit, I would do my nonprofit stuff, I'd do YouTube, I mean, and I loved it. But that was a thing, it was all me, 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 it was my freedom, but you know what it really was? I say this in my book and I say this all the time, that independence was my identity and it was a coping mechanism. If I didn't get to this side of it, I could hold on to that as, well, I have to do all of this, you know, and I have to do something constructive with this unknown time. I think I miss the independence. I think I miss the freedom of being able to come and go all the time. You know, my life is just different right now. I miss not having distractions in my relationship. Adam and I will be here. and We always said we weren't gonna do this. And I had a meltdown the other night because we're both sitting there on our phones, taking Christian for a walk and stopping every like 20 feet to answer an email. I was so upset because I'm like, we said we weren't gonna be those people and we've turned into them. But also that's life, that's life out here. We always said we wanted just to be normal. We just needed to kind of reel it back in and say, you know, this is when we're gonna do work and this is when we're gonna do family. And if it has to cross over every once in a while, that's fine, but that can't be the norm for him. But I miss not having those distractions when it was visit, it was six, it was never six hours, it was supposed to be, but it was, you know, four or five hours of just one-on-one -on -one time, no cell phones, no distractions, nobody calling to interrupt, no thoughts about, oh my God, I forgot to send this email, I forgot to do this for the business, forgot to text that person back, I need to do X, Y, and Z, my to-do list is growing, it was just the two of us. So if I could pass that along to any prison wife who's preparing for their loved one to come home or a new mom is do those dates. Promise yourselves right now that you're not gonna do that when he comes home and remind him of that. Will it happen? Yeah, it's gonna happen. Adam and I, I think are really, cause we're older, we're really, really good at knowing what we want, stating what we want. Although it takes some of us longer sometimes to admit the vulnerability. I think pregnancy hormones, postpartum hormones, and now breastfeeding hormones. My body's just fighting to go back to my normal self and it's all happening while my whole entire life tornadoed into something completely different. I live across the country, 3000 miles away from where I was living. I don't have my family here. We were so close. I miss them all day, every day. That's always in the back of my mind. I really don't have any friends here yet because I just haven't found my group. I haven't been able to go out and meet people. I don't go into a job every day, so I don't have coworkers to become friends with. Everybody I meet, I meet through Adam, which some of them are amazing, but then I'm like, this is me in my crazy overthinking head. It has nothing to do with him. I'm like, well, do they want to be my friend or are they his friend? This is a peek into postpartum re-entry new mom life. I struggle with being vulnerable. I've always been raised to hide that stuff. I'm raised, you just put on a strong face. Now, I don't know if that's just a woman thing. I don't know if that's an Italian thing, a Jersey thing, a my family thing, I don't know. But we always slapped on a smile and made sure everything appeared like it was great. And in a good way, that helped me become just a really optimistic person. I am, I see the good in everything. I see the best in everyone. That's a blessing and a curse, but it's more of a blessing than anything. I still have Jersey, I mean, I don't trust anybody, but you know what I mean. The other hand of that is I don't like to admit vulnerability. A lot of times, even to Adam, I'm like, that is so freaking unattractive. But every time I stick my neck out there and I I do he always makes me feel better even when I was telling him I'm like I don't feel like I have a plate oh my god now this is making me emotional but we always talked about running a business together and doing this and you're doing it with everybody else and I'm watching on the sidelines on the outside and I understand that I have a big job right now I'm sitting here rocking a baby to sleep as we speak our miracle baby on the other hand it's really hard for me to address this to him because of that and I'm sure with your significant other it could be hard to admit things and I want you to say it keeping it in is only gonna make it worse. Like there were times throughout this past year when my postpartum anxiety and depression that I didn't even realize how bad it was. I would just sit there for five minutes staring out into space, the most negative, darkest thoughts, dark thoughts, you guys, dark. And finally he would like realize and he's, Adam would be like, are you okay? Is everything okay? And I'd be like, yeah, everything's, everything's great, it's fine. I was thinking about the worst of the worst of the worst things that could happen. That probably would never happen, but that's just the way that hormones and anxiety and all that stuff works. So that, and then also I felt guilty 
admitting this to you guys because let's take prison wives. There's people out there that, that probably think, and I understand it, you should be grateful that he came home. You got through the hardest part. This part is easy. How dare you claim that you're depressed when you got your happily ever after? And part of me feels like you're right. And the other part is like, but I'm allowed to be human. Along with being human means that there are gonna be depressing times and there are gonna be tough times and there are gonna be times that I have to get to through. The overarching emotion in my life is pure gratitude and happiness and joy. And I wouldn't exchange it for the world, but that doesn't mean that there's day to day struggles. And if I wouldn't be real to myself or you, and I've said this, you guys can go back on my channel and watch all the videos from back in the day. I can't even count the amount of times that I've said this. I wouldn't be real if I didn't say all of this to you guys so somebody can relate, but it doesn't make it easy. There's that. There's people waiting for their loved ones to come home, long distance relationships. There's people who are fighting every single day trying to conceive and they can't. Failed IVF, miscarriages, all of that stuff. I feel so guilty feeling like I'm complaining and I hope I'm not coming across as complaining. I'm just trying to share my thoughts to help you guys. And I've kept it in for so long because I didn't want to share it and I didn't want to come across like I'm complaining. I'm so grateful for my life every day, but I hope that you can understand where I'm coming from. Once it's out and I purge it all, I can help somebody with it. All I've ever done on this channel is use my struggles and shared them with you so you could overcome what I've gone through. So that's all I'm hoping to get out of this. And then I can move on and do other things with this channel. I love being a mommy and learning new stuff. I'm not an expert by any stretch of the imagination. I am just freaking trying to figure it out. We were at dinner with a friend the other night. There was this sweet, sweet girl there that I met and she's pregnant with her third and I was saying something about CJ and I was like, well, I don't know. And she's like, honey, we're all just winging it. We're all just figuring it out. And I love that it lets you off the hook and it's true. Again, if you know, you know, but that's life. That's not even being a mom. We are all just winging this thing called life, trying to figure it out. So we let go of the judgment. It's just perspective shifts and tilts. I don't know where I'm going, but I think that I'm gonna end the video here. There was something else I wanted to say, pass along to you guys as a lesson, but I don't know what it is. So I promise my next video will have structure. I think I'm gonna go back and forth between new mommy stuff, prison stuff. I have some cases I wanna talk about, get my creative side going again, do adult stuff, get back into prison wife stuff because I needed a break for a little while. I needed to heal from the trauma. Everybody talks about the PTSD associated with being an inmate on the inside and my God, yes, absolutely. But that's not to say that there's not a lot of trauma that prison wives go through on the outside with having to hold everything down down, having to keep everything together or having to support him, support the family, send money. You guys know I'm preaching to the choir. A lot of my trauma stemmed from trying to, to remain in the closet and respectful of my family members who didn't want me to express anything about my relationship because of their businesses and because of their beliefs and their backgrounds and just old school. And then also I was with this lifer, being with a lifer who had a life sentence, but nobody was murdered and nobody was hurt and children weren't involved and all this awful stuff didn't happen. It was hard for me to explain that to people and when the laws were going to change and we got so so close and then everything was ripped out from under us and that happened year after year after year that's a lot of trauma you guys so now i feel like i've taken my time off i was pregnant i had a baby i had to nurture other areas of my life but now i'm back and i'm ready to help my sorority sisters and do what i can and do my part i said i wasn't going to leave you guys and adam and i are working on so much but i also want to help my community of people so maybe i'll talk more about re-entry stuff or maybe i will share more case cases or I don't know what it is, but I'm figuring it out. 40 minutes later, I'm gonna end this video. I just feel like I'm babbling. Please let me know in the comments if you like these kind of videos where I just kind of open up my heart, peel back the layers and let it all out. Or if you'd just rather something more structured, maybe shorter. If you want me to do the prison stuff again, if you're like, no, I'm just here for mom stuff. Maybe certain days of the week, I will do prison stuff. Certain days of the week, I will do mom stuff. Certain days of the week, I'll do cases, interviews. I don't know. He's getting a little bit better about having a schedule, but it's also really hard for me just to sit down and edit because he will come over and he will freak out and try to crawl into my lap or if I take my computer on the couch and let him play he will pull it and he almost broke it the other day so we'll figure it all out I love you guys you are amazing if you're in a phase of life like this which I think everybody is just because of the last couple years since 2020 and everything funky with that we're gonna get through this together you're gonna find your confidence I promise I got you I wrote a whole book about it <laughs> it's called the comeback code by the way it's always in the description box I think I'm gonna share some lessons with you guys too let me know what you think let me know if you hated this I don't know. Just let me know everything. I love you guys. Don't forget to subscribe so you're part of the family. You know the drill. Give me a like. Just helps me out on YouTube. And that's it. See you in the next one. Mwah.